Buffy, you know, you have that, that in, there's more to it. There's a backstory that is humongous. I am savoring the nurturing of hope in your heart, just as I will enjoy bearing witness to the destruction of that hope. The quirky dialogue, the interesting relationships, the funny scenarios, um, the tongue-in-cheek uh, self-referential humor, it's all there. Ooh, uh, <laughs> Ah, oh, forget it. Languages were never my strong point. I'm so good. I scare myself. Hey, sweetie. I've been waiting for you. Your cool moves were no match for my writerness. I'm just kind of getting acclimated to, to my joystick. Right. Look, can we just put the sod in flesh puzzle together and be done with it? And if, if you do happen to get backed into a corner, um, there ain't no way out, unless you got someone with a tunnel. You know, wasn't clever enough to be a brain surgeon. I think that that is why it's such a good game, is that they, they really do care about the story. I got into acting partly um, to do with the fact that my parents were both in the business and both relatively well-known actors in England, um, and partly because I couldn't do anything else. And uh, that, that sort of spurs you on to, you know, you've got to, you've got to earn money after a certain point, after they chuck you out of the house. And uh, uh, waiting didn't work for me. I just got too cross with the people, so it was really acting, you know wasn't clever enough to be a brain surgeon. I came in and met with Joss about this particular part and uh, that was it, you know. It was uh, very nice to be asked and uh, it felt as though the part, and pe part had been written for me, so yeah. it was a lot of fun. I, I used to play in those arcades, you know, back in prehistoric times before everybody had PCs. Um, I don't really do the PC thing, my wife does, uh, so all that goes through her, and occasionally I watch her playing The Sims, and I, I say, make him pee, or take her clothes off. And that, that's about it, really. That's as far as I get into games these days. Just had a movie at Sundance, not in the, uh, fest, not in the competition, but in the festival. It's a movie with the Polish brothers, Mark and Mike Polish. No, no interesting encounters with fans that I'm going to point out. You know, I, you know I, sign signing breasts and things like that. Yeah that kind of interesting encounters. Occasionally they offer you their breasts or their bottom to sign. But I had, you know, I don't get, I, I don't get used underwear in the mail or anything like that. Take four. It's true. I can't believe it. My own ancestor, a warrior for the powers. <laughs> Little matchstick man, do not try my patience. You are not even a part of this contest. The only reason I do not destroy you is that I am savoring the nurturing of hope in your heart, just as I will enjoy bearing witness to the destruction of that hope. Now, Slayer, it is time for the contest to begin. Once you find them, splash them with it, and they'll immediately be transported back here. Harder. No, it burns. <laughs> my, my, my. You will not thwart the... Take three. You will not thwart me, girl. You are an abomination, Slayer. You are a thorn. Nothing more. Quiet, boy. Your life is a tiny spark, Slayer, now to be extinguished. Your dust now, girl, soon forgotten. Your life meant nothing. Oh, well, now you've done it. You might have. Now you'd best find your friends before they're dead. You are a fool, Slayer. Did you truly think that you could do such a thing in this place without me knowing your every move? It's here, the first. I can taste its power in the air. 
when I first saw the script, I, I just, I was knocked out by the fact that someone American could write so well for an Englishman. Because usually, you know, we say silly things when, when Americans write for us, because that's the way English people talk. But Joss has got a real handle on, on, on how we English speak. Um, and it was, it was just, I mean, I loved the fact that there was, there was so much humour, so much arch humour, and so much, so much irony, and so much, um, I don't know, kind of colour and warmth to the character. It was, it was multidimensional, it wasn't just, I am your stock, silly Englishman. Um, and it also, as time has gone on, I love the fact that there is a, you know, there is a, there's a dark side, um, which is great to play, because it, it just gives you a lot of scope. And I did for a long time play villains. I do definitely have a dark side. Um, uh, and it's something that I've worked on for a few years trying to sort out my dark side. But it's not, it's, um, it's more about, um, I have anger issues. So does Charles. Um, 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 I guess there's, you know, I mean, as, an, you know, it, as you grow older and you get sort of more sort of about the craft and what you know what acting is about you actually get closer to yourself and it's less about sort of putting on funny voices and and, and funny clothes and pretending to be somebody else it's more about exploring facets of yourself Giles versus Ripper who wins I think they probably would just beat each other into a pulp because they are one and the same person there is no you know it's it's just like um, I haven't seen it, but um, this, you know, the Nicolas Cage movie, is it adaptation? Whatever the fuck is it? Um, you know, it's a no contest because ultimately um, they both have the same intellect, they both have the same wits, they both have the same, you know, it's, it's literally just one side of a person. It would just be a rather unfortunate puddle on the floor, I think. <laughs> Some of the, um, the fan fiction is uh, very saucy. Um, and, and, uh, and I can. <laughs> They do put me together with, with uh, people that I wouldn't normally have put myself together with. Um, <laughs> for instance. Um, no, I mean, I, you know, I can't, no, Giles and Willow, I mean, come on, please. <laughs> not right. It's really not, you know, no, don't do that. Anyway, um, but uh, no, in general, it's, I mean, I, I have a great time at, 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 at fan convention and I especially like I love the, the question and answer sessions just because I have good fun. Comic Con is just scary by the by the just the size of it. Just the sheer dint of its size. And we when we the, when we first I don't think she was with us actually, but when we first did it, when Buffy did it, um, it was great. We did the question and answer session and then they walked us down to the floor and they surrounded us with this security force that was like the X Men. It was like, what's going on? And in fact, if we just walked across the floor, as I'd, I've been a couple of times, and I just move around quite happily, and people recognise you, you know, you know, if you do just need to keep an eye out, because if someone sees you and comes and asks you for your autograph, you've got to be able to do it quick and get out, because once, once it starts, there's no way out. And if, if you do happen to get backed into a corner, um, there ain't no way out unless you got someone with a tunnel. Yeah, I mean, the difficult, but you know that thing of what, you know, I mean, I've, I've done it a couple of times, not, not stalked anybody, but if I've seen somebody, you kind of do go a bit kind of, whoa, I mean, standing next to Elliot Gould in a, you know, in a, a shopping line. <laughs> you can't, you know, and, and um, who was, I mean, I've done it, I've gone up to people a couple of times and just sort of really like your work. You know, and when people do that, it's lovely. It's really nice. Um, and the only time it was ever, I, I did f sometimes when, when I'm at dinner with my family, and well, especially when I wasn't seeing them very often, and I would talk, you know, I'd have have sort of like a few hours in New York or something that we were stopping through, or you know, we'd met, and then someone comes up and says, Excuse, "I never do this, but you know, I hate to," and it's like, "Well, don't do it then." <laughs> <laughs> but the, I mean, the other one, the classic one, yes, this, this one actually, I can say, was, I was, had to do quite a lot of commuting on the train in England, and, you know, you fall asleep. Yeah. And in my half-sleep, I could hear this conversation going on, go on, don't do it now, go on, go on. I don't think he's going to like it, 
do it, go on, go on, what? And I sort of just opened my eyes and there was this girl with one of these new cell phones that take pictures and it was like, there. <laughs> And it's like, whoa, come on, don't do that. Don't, you know, <laughs> don't go there. Buffy, hurry, they'll kill me. Buffy, hurry, they'll kill me. Our research certainly turned up plenty of precedent for dimensional bleed. Well, well, look who's here, the prodigal slayer. Buffy, try moving the camera to change your view. Buffy, try using the camera control stick to move the camera around. <sighs> I'm sure you haven't forgotten the visit we had from Willow's vampiric doppelganger. We owe that wonderful brush with alternate dimensions to Anya. Buffy, please don't dally. To use a ladder, just run up to it and you'll automatically grab hold. The first... Oh, Lord. Buffy, listen, you cannot combat the first directly without the dagger. It can only be harmed with Hope's dagger. I've always been a genre writer um, and proud of it and always will be. Um, I don't mind a, a sensitive drama. I like to watch them, but I don't know how to make them. I like genre, any genre. Every piece of art is exactly as good as as how it's created. I, you know, my favorite novels tend to be things that are, you know, just about people, although there are some science fiction novels that are very important to me. War and Peace, not so much with the, with the spaceships and the vampires, but, um, uh, but I do think that science fiction and fantasy are incredibly overlooked. The genre is completely overlooked as a, as a great base for telling stories that can encompass all range of human emotions and experience and history and sociology and you know people tend to write them off as kind of lesser when in fact I think they take a great deal of intelligence and concentration to both to create and to engage in. The fact that Buffy has become kind of a transmedia phenomenon if you will um, is something that I not only uh, thought would happen but planned on um, from the very start. Buffy was designed to be an icon. Um, she was designed to be a hero that lived outside of her television show, that entered people's subconscious lives and their video games and their comic books and books and anything we could think of. Um, not that I was like, oh, I want to market, I want to market, but I wanted to create something that was bigger than one hour a week. The most surprising aspect of doing Buffy, I think, is how incredibly tired I am all the time and how much I hate people as a rule. Um, I'd say the other surprising things are that um, people understood what we were doing right away and appreciated it. We sort of figured we'd slip under the wire and then people actually got it. That was really sweet. And uh, how much I've learned in seven years, you know, I, I used um, Buffy kind of as a film school to learn how to direct, but I also found out a lot about people and, um, and you know, how much I love working in different parts of, of the medium that I never even knew about. I think the appeal between the video game and the television show are necessarily somewhat different because they're different kinds of narrative. Um, but I think what, what works is that Buffy is the sort of person who solves her problems through, through violence, which is the message I always want to send out to the kids. And, um, uh, but she's, you know, she is a figure of action, but very recognizable. So, you know, a lot of the great fighting games are very anonymous, which is a little disconcerting, especially after you've been killed about 25 times and you start to think, who am I? What does this mean? I don't understand. And you get very French. But um, uh, with Buffy, you know, you have that, that in, there's more to it. There's a backstory that is humongous, and there's all that to call upon, and there are visual images of these people and these actors that people love, and plus killing and killing and killing and killing. I'm amazed by how much the games look like the show and how much they've tried to, to keep the integrity of the show. That's really important to me. So it's really fun to, to play or to watch people who can actually live for five minutes play and, um, and see that, uh, you know, that's, I've, that's where I've lived for seven years. Mm -hmm. I know that place. I know those guys. I think the next level for the Buffy games is going to be big Nerf hands that you can hit each other with. But then again, I don't really know much about games. It's turned me into a megalomaniac, this whole show, and um, the game is only going to make it worse. Um, 
And it is actually kind of humbling. I mean, it does make me proud, not that we struck a chord with people, because although that's nice, that's kind of a crapshoot. You sort of have to hit the zeitgeist. You sort of have to, you know, be the right guy at the right time. And, um, and you can't really take all the credit for that. But we worked really hard all the time to make the show good. That I'm proud of. Humbling it is because, you know, I, the show is bigger than me. It's bigger than the show now. It's a game. It's books. It's so many things. And uh, when people get really passionate about it, they're getting something that I get really passionate about because it isn't me. It's something, and it isn't even just something I've created. And that's not even just because there are other people involved, writers and actors and all that stuff. It's just when a thing is art, it separates itself from the people making it and becomes bigger than they are. And uh, that is both humbling and extraordinary. When I first started seven years ago, um, you know, we didn't know if it would end it after the first season, which is why, you know, we killed the master and finished our arc out. Um, you know, I've had closure almost every year, except for year six when we knew we were getting a um, two-year pickup, and then we sort of had the spike soul. We left a thread. Every other time, we've sort of said, if we never come back, we've said enough. So when we got to the seventh year, and we knew this was going to be the last, last year, um, you know, the statement we were trying to make uh, became very important. And yeah, I feel like we went out exactly the way we should. Um, what we have to say in the last episode is um, something that I really think it, the show has needed to say for a long time. What I'm going to miss most now that the show is uh, finally wrapped and we've done our seven years of hard, grueling, wonderful labor um, is really um, the writers. <laughs> Uh, hanging out with the writers. Uh, they're a really interesting bunch of people with some interesting problems and that we would talk about for many, many hours. Um, you know, one day I'm going to turn around and realize that, you know, I can't walk down the Sunnydale Street, the one street that we had, that I can't, you know, go into the bronze, that I can't go to the place and, and go and yell at the director and do all those things that I like to do. And uh, it's really going to hit me. It hasn't yet. I'm still in the exhaustion phase. I'm still in the, thank God. We made it. We're free. We're out. As you can see, uh, creativity uh, is a seasonal thing. <laughs> but um, just in case I get wounded or deaded, this is this is useful. I want to live. Now I'm like Errol Flynn without the ability to fight. I, do we have the budget for a blaster gun? This is exciting. It's sleek. It's dangerous. I feel good. Oh, a couple more points. Oh, I'll take those points. Thank you. I've got more points than you. Oh, I just, I just keep getting better. All right, Faith, show me what you got. No, not with violence. You think you're badass. Well, I'm fat ass, and you got no chance. You know, it's, it's, it's not the being stitched together, it's the outfit that actually frightens me. Whatever past we may have had that nobody knows about, you're just another vampire to me, pal. Your cool moves were no match for my writerness. Excellent. Yep. Oh, you're all made up of bits, and you kind of smell, and I don't think I like you, and I think I'm going to kill you. I have the most bunnies of all. Who's hungry? Cool, cool. I have a shovel. Because that's how I talk. That's <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm holding it back now. <laughs> I'm using my radio voice, but occasionally it comes out. Is this pirate? Because on the show, when I played a pirate, I did have a big bit. Arr. <laughs> Oh. Oh. I spent a lot of time um, in England eating candy. I would just, arr, there be monsters. I don't want to use the word munchies, but there was some times when I would eat a little, perhaps a little more candy than a normal person would. You can go, ah, there be monsters. Because I did play a pirate once. Mm. Oh. oh. This time I'm really gonna taste you. Ooh. 
And my favorite candy bar has actually finally made its way into a few shops uh, in America, which is the Star Bar. Uh, uh, mm, uh. I love the Double Decker. I love the Lion Bar. Don't get me wrong. But the Star Bar has my number. Are you busted? Here be monsters. Hey, well, you, you go, you go, Arr, there be monsters. Oh, I can kick Marster's butt with my fine British accent, which I will now not do because I, I just said example. that. In fact, I'm going to start talking like this. In the bollocks. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. That's a lot of bollocks. <laughs> did I get it right? Yes. Yeah, I did? Katmandu. These fireflies were spat off the volcano of Kathmandu. Yeah, so I did play a... So, sh should we make it piratey on that? I'm gonna go with the R there, be okay? Yeah, you bugger. That was an Australian. The 20th uh, year reunion. It's frightening a concept though that may be. So, what, they're all 40 something at this point? We're still in high school. My hairline's up to here. They find themselves on an island after a three hour tour. A three hour tour. Um, or it's a variety show. Spangled outfits. My humbility outstrips everybody else's. I'm like Gandhi. Arr, there be monsters. Arr, there be monsters. <coughs> I've always been obsessed with the Star Bar. I love the Double Decker. I love the Lion Bar. Don't get me wrong. But the Star Bar has my number. Yeah, I'm a big faker. Uh, I'm not from England. I'm from Northern California. And uh, I did a lot of stage before I came to Los Angeles. So uh, stage actors can do pretty much any accent that they could get paid for. So the, the European accents I can do well. Asian accents I don't know about. Uh, but yeah, big faker. I've had seven years to kind of perfect this accent, so it's gotten a little better. Watch the first episodes, though, if you want to laugh. A screen kiss is a very different thing than a real kiss. You're, all, you're concentrating so hard in trying to get your light in your eyes and not get in her light, and then not making the lips go all crazy and effed up and stuff. And so it's really technical. It's a lot actually like stunts. Um, so I don't know what it would be like to really fight with Sarah, and I also really don't know what it would be like to kiss her, because I really haven't really kissed her. Now, that's not really what people want to hear, but, but this is the truth. You know, it's like kissing my sister. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, uh, Sarah and I have that, really, she's like my kid sister, and um, uh, we're good friends, and, and we get along really well. As soon as I started kissing Buffy, everything changed. And I started getting my ass grabbed. People would chase me out of the pizza parlor. Uh, couldn't do my laundry at the mat anymore. Uh, because, and I figured it out because I thought, am I getting hotter? Or what, like, am I suddenly different? When we make Buffy the Vampire Slayer, what we're doing is providing a vicarious experience so the audience can be Buffy for that hour and so that they can slay those vampires and get in that danger. So what happens when you kiss Buffy is that you've kissed every girl who's watching the show. You've made out with them already, so you're already their boyfriend. So it, it just bumped up. Uh, uh, it was pretty funny. Overseas, it is ten times more in intense. Uh, it is literally hard day's night with, with, with fans rushing past police blockades, running blocks, trying to get into a little deli or something to get out of the way. And uh, terrifying, but in the best way. Yes, the Spike's journey on the show has been uh, a 
a long one. Um, you know, he started as a as a kind of a two and a half dimensional uh, villain, uh, and they never would have uh, decided to build me up so so far and be, make me so cool if they'd have known I would would be living past five episodes. Um, but there was there was something which was kind of mysterious about Spike, which was that he was he was a psychopathic killer who really enjoyed hurting people, but he was also a completely attentive boyfriend, very sensitive, uh, which you don't normally see. And I think I think that it was that contrast that initially got people interested. And explaining that contrast is what we've been doing ever since. Uh, why Spike has this incredible draw towards women and this incredible need to please them. There's a weakness there that, uh, that Joss recognized that I didn't. And as he explored it, I became more and more uncomfortable because I thought he was starting to reveal things about me. Um, but ever since, he's, ever since he got brought on as a permanent member of the show in season four, uh, it's been about taking Spike down all the pegs. They built him up so far, they're, they've been humanizing him and embarrassing and humiliating him. And I used to think that was just, I thought I was Job. You know, what character am I playing anymore? But then I realized it's when Joss and Marty really love your character that you get humiliated. So when the oatmeal gets dumped on your head, that's when they're saying, you know, we love you. You don't have to pay the game character to keep fighting is the only difference between the game character and the game and the character on the show, I think. Uh, and it's not over after 48 minutes, you can keep playing, but otherwise it looks just like me. Uh, and I did all the voiceover, so it's gonna sound like me. And uh, I think probably my black coat is even cooler in the game. I go in and out, depending on how much downtime I have on the set, I can get way into a game. And I can also take breaks after a while. I recently got this big, big ass television, this big, flat screen plasma thing, you know? And you gotta be careful of video games on the big screen because you can really get uh, disoriented. You just start spinning around because this perspective changes. Uh, but yeah, I consider myself a gamer, definitely. It's so fun. You become a little kid, you know? Oh, good, me, I wanna play with myself. Um, uh, so, you know, I act like, oh, that's pretty cool, that's nice. And, and then I get the thing home and I play it for hours. Look at me, let me do this again, see that? Yeah. Bounty Hunter. It would be my all-top favorite. That, that was fabulous. Spy Hunter is very hard to learn. The, the vehicle's kind of slow to maneuver, but you know you get to drive and shoot, and you don't get much better than that since uh, Twist of Metal. Uh, um, what's that little kids game? I like little kids games too because the, the graphic art is so amazing on them. Zapper, I thought that was fun. Kind of hard too, actually. Um, Obi-Wan was a good game. I thought uh, a nice game, although uh, I thought the color needed to be a little brighter. Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, great on all levels. I, I, I became addicted to Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I just couldn't wait to get home. I was like, I am Buffy. I'm killing those demons. <laughs> um, I, have, I have multiple PlayStations. I have four in all the different areas of my life. I have different places I live, and there's a PlayStation everywhere. There's a PlayStation in my, in my home here. I have a home in Northern California. There's a PlayStation in my trailer. And then I've got one over at my brother's house, just when I go over there. Yeah. How many games do you have? 40, 50. It's my favorite thing to go to Best Buy and just check out the new games, man. That's just like, like you, you know, uh, uh, the new DVD, that's a nice thing. But when the new game is out, that's a big deal. The only difference between acting on the set and doing the voiceover for the video, uh, for the video game, is that in the video game, you just have to heighten it just a little bit. The way we do the acting on Buffy is very straight, uh, very low-key, down-to-earth, very flat line readings, because uh, that's where the humor can kind of bounce off of. And if we found that if we, if we get too broad in the acting, it just, it just devolves into, into parody. Hey guys, if you're fans of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, check out this game, Chaos Bleeds. You will love it. If you're not a fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, play the game. You will be. I like drinking like the fluid. 
but with better results. Like drinking lighter fluid, but with better results. A card key. So where do I stick it? My namesake. All this nostalgia brings a tear to my eye. Yeah. Tell me we got that on instant replay. I'm so good, I scare myself. I'm so good, I scare myself. Bloody hell. Bloody hell. This would taste better from an open vein, but it should keep me going. This would taste better from an open vein, but it should keep me going. Look at this. Happy to have found it, but I wouldn't want to drink it. What have we here? Little holy oasis. Time to fill up the squirt gun. Excellent. All right. There's got to be a slot for this. All right. There's got to be a slot for this. I'd kill for a clue about now. Of course, that's not saying much. Right. Look, can we just put the sod in flesh puzzle together and be done with it? I started out dancing and segued from dancing into acting because I liked being on stage, but I didn't actually like the discipline of the dancing. I just liked having people do this. I moved to, to Los Angeles when I was 14, and uh, I didn't actually start on Buffy until I was like 22. So, uh, so I've, I've been working um, steadily for, for a number of years, and then, you know, uh, I kind of walked into Buffy. I just auditioned for it and, you know, lucked into the part. I think the reason that Buffy is so popular is that uh, really you, you're... You're talking about a show that, that doesn't talk down to, the, to its audience, you know. It, it really does bring the audience into, into the show. It's about, it's about a, a young girl who, you know, kicks, kicks butt, you know. But it's not just about a young girl who kicks butt. It's about a young girl who's, you know, trying to find her way in this world, who is on her own, but yet, you know, has this family of, of, of friends, really, that, that help her. And... Uh, We've been really lucky with, with our writers and our producers that they, they're just really intelligent people and instead of it just being, you know, one, one level story, they, they take a one level story and add many dimensions to it so that if you watch it, you can just see the blonde girl running around kicking vampire butt or you can see the young girl who's, you know, dealing with, you know, her relationship with her mother and the relationship that she doesn't have with her father and then dealing with this sister, you know, taking care of her sister and then, you know, her, her romantic relationships and then on top of that, you can look even deeper and see that, that we're dealing with, with, with mainstream issues, too. And, and I think that that is why it's such a good game, is that they, they really do care about the story in the same way that the writers on the show care about the story. And they care about the characters. And, and they understand that, that the people that are going to be playing this game are fans of the show and that they want what they see on TV. And that's what they're giving them in this, in this game. And, and I think they're, you know, Really lucky to have such a nice group of people putting the game together for them, the fans. What's wonderful about conventions is that you get to meet the people that watch your show. You get to meet the people that, that, that basically allow you to make a living. Because without, without the people that watch the show, without the fans, then, you know, I would be just some Joe Blow working in a re you know, restaurant somewhere bussing tables, probably, you know? Um, so to meet everybody and to see the, the cross-section of different fans and see who is involved in the show. It's really amazing. Um, I, as I've said in many, many different interviews, it's, it's like a six-year-old comes up and says, I love you on Buffy, and then a 75-year-old grandpa comes up and says, I love you on Buffy. So Buffy appeals to, to you know, many different generations of, of, of people. I mean, it's, it just, it has widespread appeal, I think, because it's just so interesting. It's so different. It's, it, there's nothing else like it on television, except Angel, I guess. <laughs> um, but it's just such a, it's such a cool show, you know? And I think people, people appreciate having a show that doesn't talk down to them. I think that the fans are really going to enjoy the game, and like they enjoyed the first game, because it, it, it's well written. Chris and Tom have done something that I think is really, really smart. They have made the game just like an episode of the show. The quirky dialogue, the interesting relationships, the funny scenarios, um, the tongue-in-cheek uh, self-referential humor, it's all there. So when you play the game, you feel like you are a part of, you know, Sunnydale. 
Well, uh, uh, I'm, I'm here. Ah, I, I tried to fight them, but... Willow, try some fireballs against those vampires. Willow and I could perform a spell to confirm that Kakistos is really dead, but we, we need to do it in the same place where he was supposedly killed. Willow, use the possession spell. Make that monster help you out. Sweetie, don't forget, you can fight off that vampire by pressing the shockwave button. Willow, I know it sounds crazy, but try the homing missile. Willow, I sense powerful magic in that cabinet. It must be the book you're looking for. But it's locked. You'll have to find the key before you can open it. <clears throat> hey, sweetie. I've been waiting for you. There's my girl. Give me some sugar, baby. Poor baby. Was it too much for you? Now that's a kiss. Oh, sweetie! How could you? Dead again? I can't catch a break. Give me some sugar, baby. So I, I had said that I had lost a bet, my wife, for the game. But actually, it was something I was just sitting in my trailer, and I decided that I wanted to do them. So, uh, so my wife took me to her to a person. So they were done professionally, but I just wanted to. Yeah, I wear I wear open toed shoes. I just I think it's unfair that that women get to wear all the all the colorful stuff, you know. So I'm gonna take them off soon though, because I'm getting too many questions about them. <laughs> I'm watching uh, DVDs on it actively, uh, but I, I, I my my wife got me the baseball game, so um, yeah, you know, I'm just getting into that and just the joystick. I haven't played since Atari, like the Barnstormer. You know, I was uh, nine, I was eight. I'm you know, 31 now, so that was a while ago. So. Uh, I'm just kind of getting acclimated to, to my joystick, if you will. I had a really bad stutter and I didn't talk and I had to go to therapy and so I, when I was 18 or 19 I decided to challenge myself and take an acting class and, yeah, and kind of kick, kick the stutter. I'm the spokesperson for the National Stuttering Foundation for the third year in a row, which is kind of a cool thing and I'm helping out a lot of people, so that's, that's nice. I would have gone you know, more with um, I, I didn't see any bedrooms in this game, you know. Uh, the whole uh, Eliza thing, I mean, we talked about a couple things, but there weren't any interactive, you know, sex scenes. I think that would have been just much more entertaining for, for, for male and, and female fans alike. Uh, I've got the whole Anyanka stuff. I mean, there was some hot stuff there going on. Uh, Cordy, we never really knew, but there was some closet stuff. There could have been some really good interactive stuff there. A whole different market. I mean, sure, you would have gotten a different rating, but come on, the kids are still getting them anyway, aren't they? M for mature means you're two, you can have it. <laughs> I give to you, go, leave. <laughs> I don't make the rules. <laughs> I just break them. He's just, you know, he's just the guy that I think that makes everything kind of real. I mean, he's the one that that uh, has to see everything. You know, from from I remember from doing the the. The, uh, the pilot episode and, and seeing the first vampire, you know, it's a lot different now because I'm just, you know, it's like second nature, you know, I'm just got used to it. So um, I just think that he's everyone's best friend when they need a best friend, when they're not hanging around their particular best friends or if they've gotten into a fight with a best friend. He's just, he's kind of like, he's, he's like the baseline. It's a lot of fun. And I like, you know, I like, I like my lines and, and what I have to say on the show. Are you, I think the show is still a lot of, a lot of quality going on and uh, it's hard to, yeah, if I were to go to like a different show, you know, um, I mean, even like film scripts right now, they're not as tight as, as our scripts for for the show. So, yeah, don't uh, yeah, don't look don't look a, a gift horse in the mouth, and I just think that it's a great thing and it and it's still quality. So, you know, why why want to run from it? The writing is so solid, and um, I just think that it was a big Calder stuff, really. You know. If, Joss hired the right actors, and uh, I think everything with, with that, with, with the style of it, the style of the, the way the show looked, with the writing, the way the actors performed, you know, their particular parts and stuff, I just think that it, it all came together, you know, it's one of those things that doesn't happen too often, and it's fun to be around. I just like talking about what I'm doing right now, and because uh, things could happen and things couldn't happen, so I don't want to get ahead of myself, just want to kind of stay in the moment, 
and be present in it and, and have a great time. I mean, this was a lot of hard work today. You know, we got through it, and so now I'm going to leave, you know, feeling accomplished and proud of myself. We did a great job. And look at that. Vampire Zilch, Xander Harris, still alive. But no Anya, no Terran here, which means the basement. Oh, monkey poop. I think I can sell this pretty well. <laughs> can I go home now? I figure eight or nine for this one, solid, a solid nine. <laughs> Who fills a bowl with hellfire and leaves it out where anyone can fill up their mega soaker? Must be the maid's day off. Really needs a spot of arson. Look at that, just waiting for me. Yep. That's the one. Felt it. In me bones. And look, goodies. Goodies, which with Buffy can make the vampires into lots of pieces. Nope. I'm headed for the basement to back Spike up. Or to dust him. Depends on if he's rescued them. A few cuts and bruises, but it looks like we're all okay. Now we just have to figure out where they all came from. You have fun doing that, sweetie. Me, I'm going along to the factory. Willow and Tara may need me. And there's going to be magical rituals. Okay, right. Get the people out. Try not to die. Good plan. You go get Tara. And here we have a handy bowl of hellfire. Battle axe! My kingdom for a battle axe! Oh, wait, all I have to do is press the punch button once I've picked it up. Cool, and I don't even have to give up my kingdom. All right, hang on. Just trying to get my tongue around it. It's a hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Uh, <laughs> ah, forget it. Languages are never my strong point.